Welcome. This is the 12th of August, 2022. This is Asia Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, topics for the agenda today include action items, news, change log, Google Summer of Code, longstanding pull requests, any other topics anyone wants to add to, add to the agenda. Okay, let's take those then. So first item, action items, uh, no progress from me. Oh, I take it back. She Code Africa Contributhon results blog post is done and posted to Jenkins.io. So let's get that one really quickly here. It is here and this one. Okay, so by way of news, no other progress on action items other than those. Uh, by way of news, uh, Jenkins 2.346.3 LTS released this week. There will be a broadcast tomorrow. What's new in 2.346.3 with Darren Pope and Mark Waite? or tomorrow, tomorrow's the wrong broadcast. Um, yeah, tomorrow, roughly, in less than 24 hours. <laughs> tomorrow is a relative term. It'll be my, my Friday when we do it. Uh, and we go forward. Any questions on the news or the action items? That's good. Okay. All right, next topic then was um, Jenkins 2.361.1, that's the September change log upgrade guide and blog post. And so this one, Kevin Martins uh, has started the, uh, the review process um, for of the of changes since 2.346 baseline. And what we did is he and I sat together and we did a, a yellow highlighter on each of the items we thought should be included. And that's, a, that's always in uh, human activity. We have to decide because the collection of changes is much greater. The sum of all weeklies is much greater than we want to show users of L uh, an LTS. The back backport results depends on what is selected for backporting. And so the backport section depends on what's selected for backporting. And right now there are a several LTS candidates in JIRA. And if I bring that up, I can show the, the results of that. Chris, are you reasonably comfortable with how to do the LTS candidates query? Um, not really. Okay, so here I'm gonna bring up and I'll just embed this in hopes that maybe it helps. So. Here is the okay. LTS candidates query that I just ran. And so Meg, I should let you know, or we should have introduced Chris, I'm sorry. Um, Meg McRoberts is a longtime documentation contributor. I'm a documentation contributor. Chris Stern is the release lead for Jenkins 2.361.1. Ah, nice to meet you, Chris. Chris is also a Google Summer of Code organization admin and a previously successful Google Summer of Code student to other, another project. So this year he is mentoring uh, the project on Jenkins File Runner as a GitHub action, in addition to being an organization admin. So Fabulous. thanks very much, Chris. You're welcome. All right, so the LTS candidates query, this thing tells us which things are potential 
for inclusion in the LTS. And if we look at those candidates, we should see, for instance, this one as one example. 2.361 core sources in Javadoc are not on repo.jenkins.io. This one matters to me because I don't want to miss having the, the uh, source code available and the Javadoc available. It breaks our documentation generation. Okay. And, and so what you do is you go through that list looking at them saying, okay, which of these should be backported? And there are some crucial ones here like, oh, where is Jetty? Well, that's interesting. So the Jetty one is not in here yet and it should be. So we need to find out why it's not. So topic for investigation, the Jetty 10 upgrade that was included in 2.363 should be an LTS candidate. And let's see if we can find that, see why it's not listed. Jetty 10, Winstone 6.1, here we go. It is LTS candidate, it is closed, released as two, why didn't I see it in the query? Um, how come is this like 363 but not 361? Oh, yeah. because because it wasn't ready in time for 361. Oh, okay. so this one was that's and that's what a backport is in this case, right? Is oh, something arrived in a weekly after 361, but we want to apply it to the 361 base in order to be sure that's in 361.1. Okay, I see. Yeah, so now, but what I don't understand is, oh, 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 right. This thing is shown as new feature. So I need to change this to improvement to uh -huh. satisfy that query. Okay, good. I don't think Basel will mind that I changed that. So now, now we see the windstone thing. So here it is. Cool. And this query that I linked is actually in the LTS checklist. So okay. if we if we look at the checklist, just a minute, the check and, and Chris is the one who Meg Chris is the one who created this checklist. Uh -huh. So so he used a template that exists there. And let's see, where is the LTS candidates query? Ah, this one. Update JIRA labels for LTS candidate queries, uh, LTS candidate issues. So here's the query. And we see there's that Windstone one. And as you're selecting them for backport, you'll, you'll update their label here on JIRA with this, oh, whoops, with the label that that document said. Where is it? Here it is. Nope. Here it is. Back one. So here it says use version number dash fixed if you decide to include it in the in the backport. So 2.361.1 dash fixed. And that means you put it in the backport. Or if you say I am not including this one, I recommend against it, you put 2.361.1 dash rejected and you leave the LTS candidate label. Okay. All right. So so there we've got the, the candidates and the, let me put the, the, this thing's link. Good, okay. All right, so any question, well, let's see, I guess back to the topic at hand, the change log. So Kevin has started this review process, items for inclusion, and then this backport section is just generated, generated by Kevin once the backports pull request is submitted. And Chris, you're the one who 
who submits the back press back ports pull request. Okay. And if you check the the checklist here, it talks about open a backporting PR with this information. You can use this script and this query to do it. Okay. It is, this will help you. And, and for examples, if you look in the Jenkins core, you can see examples of others backport pull requests by looking in the closed pull requests for the keyword backport, I believe. Let's see, where is an example? Oh, that doesn't, that's, that's not as helpful as I'd hoped, Chris. No worries. Ah, backporting, okay. Backporting. And now if we look here, backporting for LTS 2.360.346.3, here's an example. Okay. All right. So so any questions on the change log part of this? Then the next piece is the upgrade guide is assembled. Uh, so Kevin is also assembling the upgrade guide. Okay. And the way he does that is he reviews all pull requests submitted to the 2.361.1 baseline, if you will, and looks for, find the upgrade guide needed uh, label. And if the submitters did what they were supposed to do, that label will be there and we can just rely on it. Now, the reality is that's not always the case. So what he'll also do is review every one of the pull requests looking, is there an upgrade guide mentioned that they forgot to put the label on? So what, he'll, what he then finds is here's one that has the upgrade guide needed and here's the upgrade guide entry. Any questions on how he's going to assemble the upgrade guide? Um, not sure, I guess like, uh, would, would that be a final version coming out, like as a guide, as a doc, separately? It it does. So the yeah. Okay. So what happens is, let's let's look at how it's presented. Maybe that'll be the a good way, yeah. good thing to see. So on the download page. There are three links here. Okay. Two over here. And the three links are change log, upgrade guide, and past releases. Okay. So change log, there's the LTS change log. Yep. And so let's put that link there. Then the upgrade guide brings us to this page where what he'll do is he'll create a new top level entry for 2.361.x and the upgrading to 2.361.1 thing. And it will look okay. like this. Okay. And those things are actually represented in the, uh, by a very specific file name, et cetera. And that's how they're expressed. Okay. Then, so any any other questions on change log or on upgrade guide? Mm, no. Okay, oh, but do so, you know when they would be released? Like uh, so draft version. Yeah. So good question. So the the we like to make the change log and upgrade guide 
are, are usually available at least one week prior to the release. They, they don't get merged. They are usually merged the day of the release. No, no, I take it back. Usually they're merged several days prior to the release. Okay. They don't become visible to users until the code is released. Okay. So in this case, it would be September 7, 2022 is release yep. day. Did, did that answer your question, Chris? Yep, it does. Great. So then the next piece is blog post. And this is, it's not always required, but this one is big enough that we think we need a blog post. What, we'll, what it will highlight is require Java 11 and all that means, right? So okay. upgrade your agents, upgrade your... Uh, your agent JVM, upgrade your upgrade your controller JVM, um, et cetera. Check your evil job type. And sorry, that's affectionately known as the Maven job type. <laughs> and uh, and understand the impact. Etc. Then we've had a request from the Continuous Delivery Foundation for a higher level blog post. Um, and, and so it's, we're considering how should we approach the higher level blog post. One idea that Kevin and I discussed in Office Hours Europe earlier today, or yeah, about 12 hours ago, was that we consider a history of Jenkins improvements with things like tables to divs, uh, 2.277, and then UI improvements phases one through four, and then Java 11 and et cetera. And we could even consider the transition Historically, Java 8, et cetera. So Java 17. And, and that, that's when we're considering, I've got to talk more with Fatih Di Germanci about it to see uh, at what level. He said, give us a highlights thing, a high level concept. What about any of the security improvements? Oh, is this for the last oh, year? Oh, yes, yes, good idea. Very good point. Security, security enhancements. Defensive things like, yeah, good. Like you can't turn off the um, agent to control or hey, folder. Exactly, I those kind of things, yep. Don't necessarily want if there's were vulnerabilities, but you know, just general stuff. Um, Sa safeguards, right? Content security policies, preparations, those kind of things. Yeah. Right. Good. Have there? I'm trying to think. Were there? Weren't there some um, performance enhancements? Somewhere uh, may, may have been that one. one. I'd have to look further on that one. I I don't remember. Yeah, I tried to remember the whole long long arc of it. Right. Uh, the UI Any, improvements were so big. They they have been big. Anything else on Jenkins 2.361.1? Chris, any questions from you or, or topics you'd like to be sure we review? Um, I think I'm good for now. Okay, great. Next topic then is Google Summer of Code. So, Chris, maybe this is one you want to address. How do you feel it's progressing, et cetera? Okay, so um, we've just had a call yesterday and uh, we had three contributors at the call presenting their progress. So, so far, so good. Um, 
I think they're all on track to complete the projects by the deadline. And uh, midterm revisions have been done and all passed, which is good. Very good, thank you. Welcome. Now, in in office hours uh, about twelve hours ago, one of the Google Summer of Code students actually showed some additional demonstrations of progress they're making. If you're okay, I'm going to show some of the things they highlighted for us. This was Vihan Thora, and Vihan showed us, um, okay. hey, the issue we had detected in the documentation that was being generated is now resolved. And, and it's a nice, nice feature. What had happened was Vihan has significantly improved the document, the pipeline steps documentation, but in the process, we lost this particular page. Well, you can see by my clicking here, it's back. <laughs> so one of the things that, that this gives us, Vihan's enhancements gives us the ability to filter on page by just typing a little bit in this field. Wow. This is so much better than the old way we had to do it of search in page with control F. It, this is just much, much better. Well, Vihan's now found, started his work on the next step, which is to dramatically reduce the size of this huge page so that it's some of the things that are embedded in inside it, like this monster right here, um, become separate pages for faster loading, and for removing redundant copies of this thing that exists in five or more places in the document tree. So, so it's a, again, he's making great progress on, on how it's going. Yeah, that's cool. So, and I'm just gonna copy those notes from earlier just to be sure that we've got them. Great. Okay. All right. So next topic that anything else on Google Summer of Code that you wanted to highlight, Chris? Um, I think um, except for well, everyone's projects under Jenkins right now, except for the one I'm have, have been mentoring, but we're working on that. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next topic then, long-standing pull requests. So we've got we've got several long-standing pull requests open on Jenkins.io. Let's take a look at those. The one that had been receiving more attention recently was this one right here. Where is it, Meg? Here it is. The improve a plugin tutorial and blog post. Yes. So what what this is, Chris, for your info, it's a okay. an attempt to make it much easier for new contributors to join the Jenkins project and readily make useful and valuable contributions to the project. So here's how the page will will look when deployed. Is okay it will look like this. They go to the developer guide and this thing on improve a plugin is the new thing. Cool. And what it provides is a series of steps with video links on, hey, here's how you add a Jenkins file. Here's how you update the parent palm. Here's how you update the minimum Jenkins version or add more of spot bugs or use the plugin bill of materials. Each of these things is a a small but actually useful contribution that they can make. We hope we'll be able to use this for Hacktoberfest, for new plugin adopters, et cetera, so that they can, they can take these things and run with them. Now, many of them have video clips that highlight it that Darren and I recorded some time ago, how to do this particular thing along with the stepwise instructions. Okay. The challenge is it'll it'll require continual continual evolution, right? This one, for instance, migrating yeah. plugin documentation 
there's a lot of material here about how to do it. It just has to be organized properly. Okay, maybe I can help out. Mm, yeah, that that would be that would be much appreciated if you can. That'd be great. Okay. Um, so right now the next steps are that. Let me put a link to that site because there's no reason we can't prototype. And the original document and the prototype, Kevin Martins has agreed to, as a brand new user, as a brand new contributor, he's going to actually do an evaluation of it, walk through its steps and give feedback. Hey, this didn't work for me or this did work. And then we are also going to use that same material at DevOps World in a 90 minute workshop that um, Mark Waite, let's see. Mark Waite leading, Bruno Verachten, and uh, John Mark Mason, assisting. And what we do is, what we hope there is we'll get several people who will adopt plugins as a result of this workshop. Okay. Meg, any questions from you there? I know we've been through this one multiple times for right. you. And... No, good to see progress happening. Okay. So other longstanding pull requests, we've got one from Meg that we still need some review on. Actually, we've got several from Meg. Meg, I think this was the one we had worked on last week, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. The major restructure. Let's be sure that it doesn't have any new conflicts. Okay, it doesn't have conflict, so that's good. And there's what there's a comment. I think that's an old comment that I disagreed with. I saw that there. There's a comment that shows here, way back. Uh, okay, well, hang on. Let's see. So you said way high. It's early. Whoopsie, there it went. Scroll down. Okay. And think about half a page. Okay. Let me. There it goes. There. Okay, yeah, so that's, I think that is resolved, but it didn't resolve in a way that actually automated. Okay, so it's, because it's certainly showing outdated. Outdated, so. yeah. Okay. You look at it and you look like, the, it looks like it's an outdated. Can we say that when it's resolved? I uh, can. I've, in general, when Daniel comments on things, he's, yeah. his preference has been don't resolve it because he likes to read the history later. Know. Okay, so we'll leave it, yeah. Okay, okay. so... But I, I think that the the restructure here now we could and we may want to because it was we last did the merge seven days ago. Meg, maybe what we should do is let's update this and get get it merged into get master merged into it. Yeah, good idea. So that we don't we don't get too far distant from master. Right. So just a minute, let me. GHPR checkout. And the one we need is this one, 4612. Okay, and how many polls can it? Okay, so it's it's now up to date. Good. And this will now regenerate the, uh, the, the, the preview site with current changes of the, the site itself, plus your additions. Right. Now, are there others of these that we should do something similar? So oh, the, Lord, it's all getting so rusty now. I'm trying to remember. Well, maybe let's take a look and because I think several of the others were like smaller pieces that would go in after this one. Ah, okay. So they they really are, and that makes sense. They should be dependent on the on the restructure. Right. right? And three of them are four of them are marked as work in progress. They were a start. They were things oh, that we didn't oh, have right. information on. Right. Okay. So and worrying about the work in progress is probably premature. This one is the big one, and this is the the one that 
we want to be sure right. Daniel Daniel gives us a review on others right. from the security team. And then the other things. Um, just for yucks and grins, since you're doing, um, what is in that uh, 4701, the security for plugin developers? Whether there's uh, anything in there that we want to be sure is in your. Well, let's see. Good. So this one has. Oh, oh, okay, right. So watch the security advisories, confirmed the security architecture. Yeah, this is a good one. All right, we ought to consider cons these are these are points of advice for developers to consider ways to write more secure code in Jenkins. Right. And that does go to developer. Does that go into what's so this goes into developer, but it would not naturally go into the tutorial unless I put it there. Okay. So that's a good one. This is a good one for, let me put a link to this into the notes so that we consider including security recommendations from PR XXX. 4701, I believe. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 4701. Okay. Good. Thank you. And does that one need to be refreshed then? And oh, we should do that. Yeah. Good idea. So let's do, let's do that. GRHPR checkout 4701. Git merge master. As I recall, I consider that somewhat nascent that there's probably a lot more, but it's a start. Right. Good. All right. Any others that we should we should review in that? Let's take a look here again. So back here to or right, here, you know what? Let's make it easier. Let's just look at ones with you as the author. Ah. Okay. So. Yeah, it really shows that the most crucial is the restructure. Right. Now, why did I request changes? Huh, I don't know. Interesting. I think still the, the I've got to review it and Daniel, and I think Daniel's is the more crucial, but let's. Yeah, this thing went through so many iterations. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, yeah, the last only... I saw it, I thought it was a kind of a good place. Now I don't know where it is relative to what's happened since I've mm -hmm. had time to really work on it. So right. Okay. Yeah, so that looks good though. Security section restructuring. It's not how I want it spelled. Okay. Okay. Back to our others. Any other older pull requests we should look at? So let's look at or requests in general. Oh yeah, so here's one. Okay, this one is one that's probably large enough. It needs a separate review. Kevin just submitted this one as a an update to the Blue, Blue Ocean Pipeline Editor document. Ah. But it's one that, that it's been through a review by several other reviewers. I just need to do an initial review. If we look at the review comments, there have been comments and refinements from, I think, from Carrie and from Dan. Yeah, so from Carrie Mason. Uh, oh, I'm, okay, I don't see any from Dan, but but this one has been reviewed in, in depth already. I just need to do a final review and get it merged. Yeah, okay, good. 
So notice, Meg, there are only 24 open pull requests. Wow. We are under the one page of open pull requests. Wow. <laughs> so any what? other topics we need to review today? Meg, I know you're usually at end of your time about this. I point. am. I'm just about ready to hang up on you. All right. Chris, any other topics you want to cover? Yeah, but um, it's more like a question because I was going to ask anyways later. So I'm um, just wondering when would the plugins need to be upgraded to like to drop support for version eight of Java? Ah, good question. Yeah, so when do plugins need to be upgraded to drop Java eight support? It's a very a very good question. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the how it, how that works. So when a plugin requires a Jenkins version that requires Java 11, then the plugin also requires Java 11. So okay. as an example, when the Git plugin sets its minimum Jenkins version to 2.361.1 or later, then the Git plugin requires Java 11. Now that's important, that specific example, I'm gonna reshape it just a little bit. When the Git pl client plugin sets its minimum version, then the Git client plugin requires Java 11 and can upgrade its internal copy of JGit from 5.13 to 6.2 or later because the JGit project stopped supporting Java 8 with 6.0. So we've been locked on to JGit 5 because we don't we we still had to support Java 8. As soon as the Git client plugin requires Jenkins 2.361.1 or later, I can upgrade JGit to 6.2 or later. Okay. Did did that answer your question? Yep, it does. Great. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Recording will be available, I hope, within 24 hours for reference purposes. Check for it on community.jenkins.io. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Talk to you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 Meg, Meg, wait yeah. a sec. Sorry, I forgot. Next week, I'm off because I'm going to be in the mountains of Utah. So oh, I propose we you. cancel next week's meeting. Uh, because I don't want to make somebody else try to run the Zoom setup for this meeting. Are you okay if we cancel? And Chris, Absolutely. is it okay with you it if we cancel? Be the same. It wouldn't be a meeting without you. I just couldn't stand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks. Next week's meeting leave, is canceled. Um, Chris, does that leave you? You don't have any deadlines that are going to be hurt by not having a meeting, right? No. Okay. Good. So glad to have you on board, Chris. Yeah, me too. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right.